Welcome, everybody. My name is Orion Erickson. I go by LEAF. I'm one of the uh, program managers for Open Topic for the Air Force or, or, or with AFWorks and AFRL running, running these Open Topic SIBRs. Uh, SIBR stands for Small Business Innovation Research. And this call is to inform uh, the companies on what's coming up with the joint Open Topic. Uh, if, if that doesn't make sense to you now, it will. We'll walk you through it. Uh, but this call is to give you a wave top level of, of what you can expect from the program. But uh, the, the majority of the effort is going to be focused on the questions that you have. So you'll see a, like plus AMA. It stands for ask me anything. What we're what we're looking for here is if you have questions on on the process, questions on how to participate, et cetera, just if you want some insight. We'll open up the floor after we, we do our presentation for, for Freeline Friday so we can ask questions real time. But we also have stakeholders on the call, stakeholders within the Department of Defense that can answer questions real time in chat. So if I missed you, uh, if, if you're a member of the, of the government and I missed you, just raise your hand and, and one of the co-hosts, please uh, elevate those uh, personnel. Okay. Uh, you, you'll, you'll see it takes a village. What you don't see uh, behind here is probably the 80 personnel that, that really keep the, the ball running. But here, here are some names you may come across uh, throughout the next couple months if you choose to participate with, with SBIR. Uh, you got uh, myself, Matthew Scott, Jared Evans on the Air Force side and the Army, uh, Monroe Harden, and et cetera. I'll, I'll ask these guys to introduce themselves and their organization but we just wanted to let you know that there are quite a few people behind this approach and I'll expand why it's different uh, coming up. But first we wanna hear from you. And I have this, um, this little poll. So if you don't mind for the companies on the line, we wanna know if you've ever done business with the government before. So it's pretty easy. You can text or you can go to pollev.com with that forward slash right and E386. Uh, but let us know if you have done business with the government before. We're kind of curious to see uh, what, what snapshot of companies are dialing into, into these. And from that, I'd like to uh, uh, further uh, introduce personnel on the Air Force side. Chris Benson, would, would you mind saying hello? All right. Hey everybody, my name is uh, Captain Chris Benson uh, from the... Uh, uh, from AFWorks, working on the uh, uh, reaching out to non-traditional businesses with the Air Force. I'm here with David Schiff, uh, who is taking photos of this poll from the Navy. Hey, David. And we got uh, Jared Evans. Would you mind saying hi? Hey, everybody. My name is Jared Evans. Um, I'll be the STTR lead, the Small Business Tech Transfer Lead, um, as Technology Transmission Director at AFWorks. And then some of our friends from AFRL, would you mind chiming in and introducing yourself? All right, uh, folks from the Army. Hi, it's uh, Major Russ McNair. I'm with the Army Applications Lab in Austin, Texas. Uh, I am the hey, deputy Joe. for. <laughs> sorry, the deputy for the technical analysis team here at AL. Awesome. Navy. Oh, we got David, right? Anyone David, else from the Navy? Here. Yeah, uh, David Schiff here from Naval X. Uh, we may or may not have. A couple of my colleagues from uh, one or two of the systems commands and Office of Naval Research Online. Uh, if they're on, go ahead and speak up if you guys are online. This is Donna Attic from the from Navair. Great, thank you, Donna. Scott, would you mind saying hi? Uh, Scott Augenbaugh, I'm the uh, Deputy Acceleration Portfolio Director at the National Security Innovation Network, NSA. And NGA. Yeah, this is David Grover. Um, I'm the technology and solutions advisor here for NGA's outpost in Austin. And any other government stakeholders that I may have missed, would you please chime in and say hi? Hey, uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Major Dan Tadros. I'm with the uh, Joint Artificial Intelligence Center. Great. And, th and this is Kelly Kernan here with the Air Force Cyber Sitter Program. Hey, Kelly. As you can see, companies that have dialed in, there's a lot of personnel on this call, and we have not done this before. This is our first ever joint uh, Cibber topic. I want to give you a wave top level of what Cibber is. 
Cibber stands for Small Business Innovation Research. It's, it's uh, like its name says, it's a pot of research and development funding set aside for small business. Small business meaning 500 employees or less with 51% of that uh, owned with, in, the, uh, in the US itself. So that opens the aperture to a lot of organizations with, within the United States. The program uh, where it's at now is roughly a $2.8 billion annually that needs to get spent and the Department of Defense gets about 1.2 of that. Now, historically, it's been ran by program offices. And what I mean by program offices is, is like for the Army, someone in charge of tanks, helicopters, and the Navy, someone in charge of ships, and the Air Force, fighter jets, etc. Whenever there's a problem that we could not solve internally within the Department of Defense, we have this pot of money, right? The, these silver dollars that we can turn to small business in hopes to try to facilitate a possible solution for that problem. Now, historically, we, we would see anywhere between 16 to 20 contracts per cycle per branch. And by cycle, we have dot one, dot two, dot three. So every four months within a calendar year, we'll have a, a, a cycle. So 20.1 is our first one within this calendar year. And solicitations are open next week on 14 Jan, so you can apply then. But we would see roughly 60 per branch, right, uh, every, every year on these, on these CIBR uh, contracts. And that really would not afford uh, all, the, all the, uh, the funding being spent. So we would often turn over quite a bit of resources every year because we were not able to, to allocate those funds uh, necessary for small business. I'm gonna walk you through on how we've kind of changed that construct, uh, but that's CIBR, how it's been ran before. And if you've been involved with the government before, it looks like 64% of you, 63, that might've been how you navigated the, uh, the, the, the roadmap, is you were involved with the, with the CIBR program that had a specific problem that you were able to apply a specific solicitation or proposal against in hopes to, to solve that one problem. We are, re, we are changing that uh, at lightning speed in, in hopes to increase our industrial base. Why do we want to increase our industrial base? Um, if you look between, uh, we'll call it um, Pearl Harbor and D-Day, the acquisition uh, strategy of the, the of the War Department then went through the roof. We were able to to win. We saw skunk works, etc. We saw this again with the Cold War, 1958, when when Russia beat us beat us uh, with Sputnik. And so, well, today, if you look at the domains we're fighting against, and we're all watching the news, um, there there are a lot of potential downfalls, a lot of potential friction points in these new domains that we may not be ready for. So we're doing the same approach without that, that, that threat necessarily interface, but it is in there. The red tape that other, other governments have are not as significant or not as perceived as significant as the red tape the United States government has with, with business in, in its borders. So we're trying to increase the industrial base to be ready for the next fight. We need your help. And for those of you that have never done business with government before, odds are it's probably you didn't understand if there was a, a marketplace or you didn't think there was a, a product market fit or that red tape, like I mentioned before, was a big deterrent from, from your business doing, doing any sort of relationship with the government. Where you can find information that, that I'm talking about, uh, afworks.af.mil, check out that website, click on for industry, scroll down to Cyber to Open Topics, and you'll see a walkthrough, a checklist on how to apply for this next round that's coming up. Uh, there are additional resources there if, if you wanna learn more about the Cyber program or STTR or other, other vehicles that we have dealing with the with the SBIR program, and it's on that website there. So uh, I wanna, Clearly articulate afworks.af.mil is the best way to go to see about this joint open topic coming up. Okay, like I, I was talking about er, earlier, that we are trying to increase the industrial base because there's thousands of commercially viable companies out there within the United States. We are trying to tap into that and we are moving at uh, what I call lightning speed uh, in regards to how it's been done before, you would always see, you know, that 300-page proposal that that uh, 
six months to get a contract if you've ever done business with with the government before or you've heard of your friends in the in the commercial space saying that to, towards you and and you kind of stiff armed or gave the heisman uh, to even thinking about doing business with the government but from our leaders within the department of defense army navy air force marine corps coast guard india you name it we are trying to increase our industrial base and this is a great way to do that we we understand from, from my vantage point that companies are looking, there, there's four things, there's really five things, uh, but I'll talk about the four critical uh, that attract companies to do business with, with a potential customer. One, you gotta make it simple, you gotta make it accessible. So uh, we are changing the, the way to do a, a proposal within SBIR to a single five page tech volume and a 15 page slide deck is all you need to get your foot in the door with the government. So it takes about two cups of coffee in a couple hours and you can write up a, a five page tech volume and a 15 page slide deck of, of, of PowerPoint and that's pretty easy. So 20 pages total is all you need to submit to get into, into this, this marketplace. Two, companies care about access to potential customers, right? You've got Scott, you've got Dave, you've got others like myself on the line that should you get into this cyber open topic, we will walk you through and help you connect to potential customers in the defense space. We understand you may have, you may have never done business with the government because you didn't know anybody in the government. We're gonna help you get through that space. We're gonna help you navigate that realm. We will be your Sherpas in that regard. So, so don't worry about that. And then uh, third, care about access to, to the data, right? We're not, uh, we're not in a position in the government to, to take the IP away from you, the intellectual property that you have for your company. We just want to apply the green paint on it and adapt it for, for government use. So I'll talk about that coming up. And then for uh, transition, we don't want your tech to sit on a shelf and, and you don't want that either. So we are including all the necessary stakeholders from the ground level getting in into this SBR topic to help increase the odds that you can take your product to transition within the defense space. And then the last thing is really the experience. So how do you how do you, how do you quantify the experience a company might have within within the government? Odds are you may have heard from another company that had a positive experience within this open topic cyber construct and that may have alluded you to to, to dial in to this call today. And so we're trying to do our best. It's, it's that long pole in the tent, if you will, of, of how do we keep this positive? How do we, how do we keep this accessible uh, approach to, to where businesses want to continue to do business with the government? But odds are you may have heard from another business that, that the cyber open topic is a great way to do that. How it's changed, I talked about uh, initially from the 80s where the Reagan administration started this, this cyber uh, program. But what we're looking at today, what are we talking about? What is Leaf talking about with open topic? Open topic is putting the cart before the horse. We are flipping the program on its head, meaning we are asking you to submit a proposal without a specific uh, problem set solution out there. We just wanna see if you have a commercially viable product uh, or, or close to having a commercially viable product that can be adapted for government use. We don't know all the answers. We have lowered uh, the requirements and we've lowered the risk a little bit. So what you can look at there is, is a $50,000 contract up to uh, 90 days, I'm sorry, up to, up to $50,000 with 90 days to find that product market fit uh, within the, the Department of Defense. And yes, it's joint, meaning more than one service. So you can, it can work with Army, Navy, Air Force, you name it. To, to find that product market fit, to find that potential customer and end user within the Department of Defense. This is a new, this is a new, uh, <laughs> this is a new approach. And we started it in 18.3. I mentioned, you know, dot one, dot two, dot three. So calendar year 18, uh, roughly October timeframe. We started this open topic realm. We have, we have seen uh, 60 contracts increase to, uh, 60 contracts a year increase to 450 a quarter. So uh, we are increasing the contracts, we're increasing the companies coming on board, we are increasing the industrial base in the Department of Defense, but we are still uh, wanting to continue this endeavor. Our leaders think that this is a valid effort and more money, more, more personnel are being put in this. And guess what? Yep, it's now joint. 
where we have uh, all branches within the Department of Defense facilitating this open topic idea. Three verticals to, to participate. My good friend, uh, James Harden, uh, lined it out best for us. So there's STTR, and we'll talk about that coming up. So if, you, if your company is not yet uh, having that commercial traction, and when I mean commercial traction, I'm talking about non-research dollars being, being put into a company or product. If you have something outside of research money coming into your company, uh, then, then we'll talk about like Cyber coming up in, in a second. But if you still have that idea, you are still trying to develop a, an adequate prototype, then STTR may be the way to go or small business tech transfer and research. If you have a commercial product, you have a commercial solution that you think may be able to be adapted, we want you to apply for a Cyber phase one. And if you uh, find yourself in a position to where you have that government customer, the government end user ready to put that green paint on your product and adapt it, then you're in that trial realm. You're ready to go to trial and that's uh, direct to phase two. All of these are gonna be made available to you starting next week and you'll have 30 days up until the uh, the second week of February to get your proposal in to, to uh, be a potential candidate to receive a contract for one of these uh, verticals. These are contracts, not grants. We are asking you to perform a customer discovery, finding that product market fit, or in the case of direct to phase two, actually adapt your commercial product for, for government use. Uh, I wanna, uh, I mentioned STTR earlier. We have Jared Evans on the line. Sir, if you would not mind uh, talking to these slides coming up. Absolutely, thanks Leif, and uh, shout out for the James Harden graphics on the verticals. You get a crisp high five for that one. So, uh, for for those of you on the uh, on the line, STTR is, is shorthand for the Small Business Technology Transfer. Uh, we're going to highlight some of the differences here and some of the, uh, the like like Leaf said, way of top information um, for you guys to be able to move forward uh, and and see if this works for you and your company. So ultimately, the STTR is a three phase development program tailored specifically to commercialize compelling dual use research. Right. The uh, key words being there is commercialized dual use research, right? Our intent is to facilitate uh, engagement, wide and expansive engagement across the federal marketplace, right? Um, as with the case with SBIR, these STTR program results in a sole source justification that is able to be used not only in the Air Force, but across the federal government. So there's a huge, huge value proposition when it comes to small businesses, small business and uh, being able to leverage uh, the, the, the perks and the benefit of this program. Um, also, you know, we're, we're leveraging our position and to, to be able to buy down that some of the technology risk uh, for our applications, right? Uh, we want, ultimately, we want you to be commercially successful, both in the, the regular consumer market, as well as the federal marketplace as well, right? Uh, and, and to that point, we award government contracts not research grants. So that's an important important thing. I know, you know, historically speaking, SGTR has, has, has seemed to fall in the, in, the, in the grant land, if you will, um, and is a purely an R&D uh, effort in many, and from many perspectives. Uh, for this open topic in particular, right, we're really focused on commercializing that, uh, making you, like I said, commercially uh, successful as a company. Uh, we'll go on to the next slide here. Uh, we'll highlight some of the, the similarities and differences here. So similar to CIBR, where uh, STTR is a three-phase commercialization program, uh, we follow a, a pretty loose discover prototype transition flow, if you will. Uh, and ultimately, as I mentioned, you end up with a sole source justification uh, that you can use across the federal government, which is a, a, a big deal. Uh, we satisfy the competitive contracting clauses and requirements as part of this program. And that sole source justification allows you to interact uh, directly with uh, those, those customers at the end of the program. And, and more importantly, frankly, the, uh, those federal customers can come to you directly for, uh, for what you developed as part of this program. Now, that being said, we, uh, we also have a few things that are, that are unique to STTR that are based on its focus on, on commercializing research. Uh, first of all, we don't require an already commercialized product. We can start with something as early as an idea, right? We uh, obviously the more the more mature, the better, and, and the more easy it is to communi communicate to prospective customers. Uh, but we don't require that upfront. 
Uh, what we, one thing we do require, however, is a qualifying research partner. Uh, they have to perform at least 30% of the work in terms of hours or just by uh, contract value or money that they're going to uh, obligate or spend. Um, there's a, a variety of, of things you can use uh, as, or a variety of folks that you can take advantage of to, to be your research partner, whether it be a university, which is the kind of the traditional case, uh, nonprofit entrepreneurship centers, FFRDCs, which are federally funded research and development centers, uh, or others. Just pretty, pretty, pretty interesting kind of scope expansion from what it has been historically, right? Uh, SCTR has higher phase two matching ratios than, than the SBIR program. While the ceilings aren't as high uh, necessarily in phase two specifically, like I said, we do leverage the, uh, the investment from a government and private sources uh, to a higher level. So four to one for government, as you can see there, uh, and two to one from private sources. Uh, the, also, the, the principal investigator, the PI, that may be primarily employed by the research entity or the small business, right? This is a caveat specifically for STTR that uh, allows folks like professors, right, to, to work primarily for the university, that is to say the research entity, but also take part of this program and help bridge the gap between, you know, certainty in terms of uh, employment and finances and so on, and making their small business a financial success and commercial success over time. Right, and then all with the SCTR, we're, we're, we're leveraging close ties with the federal R&D and operational communities. I think this is, uh, this is important because we have, we have uh, very good relationships with uh, the R&D community across the federal government. Uh, we can leverage those to, uh, uh, to your benefit as well as the operational communities as well. So uh, we'll go on to the next slide here. Great. So uh, things that are new in this X20.A, right? So this is the very first commercial solutions offering in STTR history. So it started in back in 1992, 1993, and this is the very first time that we have not done a broad agency announcement for these. What that allows us to do is enables the operational communities to fund your research, right? Previously with the BAA, it was kind of focused on uh, Air Force Material Command and those research and development dollars. Right. With this new solicitation vehicle, we can allow, like I said, the operational communities to to take interest in your product and help buy down some of that risk that you, uh, based on the value that you can provide to them. Uh, we also updated the uh, the phase one and phase two awards. We actually doubled the phase one awards and we moved the phase two up to 500K uh, matching. And what that means is that, you know, we can take the invested funds and add that to that 500K potentially. So the, the ceiling isn't necessarily 500. Um, that is the, that's the ceiling for the AFWorks investment specifically. So uh, it's important to keep in mind. And also for the phase one tech volume requirements, we moved to a 25 slide uh, proposal as far as the, the tech volume specifically, right? Tech paper is, is optional. You can do that five page paper uh, if you would like, but we are really interested in understanding your technology um, at a higher level, to be honest, and being able to communicate those that value uh, to to our customers as well. Uh, we've got another thing, a few things coming later this year that we're working on now uh, that are not incorporated into this 20.a uh, solicitation. One is we're working cl very closely with uh, the Air Force and, and the uh, Space Force STTR initiatives uh, to include AFRL's quantum topic. Right, we are we are tied in closely with them, and we are very eager to uh, to help them help move them forward in that particular area. Uh, we're looking to expand that as well to, uh, to other high technology areas that we're looking to, to develop as a, as a group. Also, we're looking at tailoring developing, uh, development of the focus areas and the pitch days and integrating STTR more fully into those areas as well. Um, broader engagement and impact through joint STTR topics. Obviously, we're gonna talk about the joint SBIR topic here in just, uh, just a moment but we're looking at following that lead uh, in STTR as well. And then obviously, uh, we're always looking at innovative updates to incentive structures and, and other things that, that will serve our, our commercial customers as they were uh, more, uh, more comprehensively, right? We, we want you guys to have, um, you know, feel like you can move through the process and, uh, and be secure in that. Uh, evaluation criteria is pretty common across uh, and it's highlighted in the solicitation itself, but it boils down to technic uh, technical team and commercialization. You can read more about the, the details there, but long story short is um, we're looking at a comprehensive package when we move forward. So 
Uh, we'll move on to the next slide. I know we want to, we want to move to the uh, the AMA uh, portion of the program here pretty quickly. So um, phase one proposals due 12 February at 8 p.m. Um, obviously, you have to meet baseline eligibility requirements, whether that means uh, incorporating and registering, uh, and also, as we mentioned, have a research uh, entity um, partner as well. And there's 25, te 25, 25 slide tech volume as well. Uh, we're going to be having an STTR open topic specific AMA uh, next week. Look forward to folks who are interested jumping in there. We can add, answer more specific questions when it comes to uh, STTR, what we're planning on doing and what we're doing for this topic uh, and this iteration more specifically. Uh, as Leith mentioned, we have a, uh, the page on the AppWorks website as well. Uh, feel free to jump on there and uh, we'll be updating that um, with, with updated information as, as, as we get it. So uh, thanks for your time and look forward to answering your questions. Thank you, Jared. All right, so that was STTR SIBR or uh, SIBR phase one. What we're looking for there is validating your, your product uh, market fit. So uh, you can receive up to 50K for a 90 days contract uh, to find the fit between your non-defense commercial product and the uh, defense market. What we're looking for there is, is there any commercial traction with, with your current product, any non R&D funding uh, being allocated to your company for it? If so, uh, odds are uh, that uh, that your your phase one is postured to to be a, a success. So, uh, just like Jared mentioned, we're looking at the three different uh, layers within Open Topic: technical feasibility, uh, commercialization of the company, where you're going to be at in three years, and then is there a, a defense market or your best guess for a defense market? I want to uh, make make sure everybody understands this. We've talked I talked about tanks, ships. Uh, fighter jets, but keep in mind, military installations across the world are just small cities. So think of uh, emergency response, think of installation security, think of building maintenance, aircraft maintenance, tank maintenance, you named it. Anything you can see or find in, in the commercial sector, odds are there's a space for it in the defense market. Uh, for time's sake, I'm going to, uh, to go through these a little faster. You'll, you'll notice focus areas and user needs on our website. Uh, you are not required to be in line with the focus area or user needs. If so, if, if so feel free to uh, articulate that within your proposal, but uh, you are not required. And then the, the direct to phase two route. Uh, this is if you're postured to begin trials with with your defense stakeholder, who's some caveats associated with direct phase two. You need matching funds, either government or private. You need that customer memorandum. You can find it on our website. If you're already ready to trial, the discussions have been there. This is just a, a way to capture all, all that for your proposal. So it's a letter from the defense unit saying that they agree and to partner with the company for the trial phase. And we can take, uh, almost all different types of funds to be matched. Okay, we talked about those things to look out for. If you're having uh, if, uh, questions on the submitting process, the uh, Defense Cyber STTR Innovation Portal does have a webinar located, uh, uh, I'm sorry, on January 16th. And if you wanna find the information there, how to register, afworks.af.mil, just like we talked about earlier, scroll down to how to apply and you can look at number two down here at the bottom. And uh, we have what's called a drop box for us. Click on there and then this information can be found in there. Okay, shifting this discussion to Freeline Friday. Uh, and, uh, give give uh, the line a second to, to ensure no one else is speaking before you chime in. But now we wanna hear from you. We've got a panel of experts on the call ready to answer your questions. So. Freeline Friday for the companies on, on the call. What questions, concerns uh, do you have? Um, can everyone hear me? Yep. Hi. So my team, uh, we currently are on a open topic 19.3 Air Force Phase 1. We currently have end users in the Marine Corps who are testing our product, but we really couldn't figure out the Navy uh, funding process for SBIR and everything last cycle. Now that we're at, at where we are and we're trying to find an Air Force person to take our phase two, should we be able to apply to, is there an open topic uh, joint uh, phase two or is it only a phase one right now? 
Only a phase one right now. Good question. So right now, uh, it, the the joint aspect is targeted on phase ones to to see if this is working. Right. So get your foot in the door within the jo joint topic realm. From there, it'll be a joint uh, phase two. Um, would we be able to reapply our topic that we are currently in Air Force for for a joint topic, or is that not a possibility? No, uh, so you can always apply. However, within open topics, you can only have one for everybody on the line. You can only have one current phase two. That does not negate any other special topics or specific topics within the Air Force or other branches. But for open topic, you can only have one uh, current phase two. You can have them sequential, but not at the same time. And sorry, just one last question. Um, are they allowed to be repeat? So say if we can't find an Air Force end user, are we and we already have an end user right now inside the Marine Corps, would we be able to use our same uh, topic with the Air Force as we have right now in the next? Yeah, your same, your same submission, yes. It's still open topic. It just opens the aperture to, uh, like, uh, if, we, if we all think about uh, the Air Force had 600 or has 660,000 personnel in it now. Now we're opening that up to almost uh, like 2 million potential customers and end users within the defense space that you can connect to within 20.1. So yes, you can reapply. Uh, next company. Hi. For the joint uh, open is... topic, I'm sorry, for the joint open topic, are we, are we picking what agency it's going to go to or does it just go into the joint uh, pile and then the agencies will decide if they like it or not? So that, that third pillar, uh, the product market fit, if you have an idea of where your solution should reside or where you think it could reside, annotate that. But no, you are not required to say, this is for the Department of the Army, this is for the Department of the Navy. Um, with the uh, um, phase one, uh, is it, uh, does, the pro does the product have to be currently in the commercial market or can it be a solution using uh, off-the-shelf components or uh, uh, an integrated solution that is being proposed as an application for uh, uh, for the military? Uh, good question. So, uh, you know, we get this a lot. We're going to take aspects from A, B, and C and make product D, right? Uh, how can you validate product D? Uh, that's going to be the, the, the question you're going to have to answer in your proposal. We want to know aspect, we want to know how valid is product D because you're taking, a, you know, an aggregate solution of A, B, and C, for instance, to make this D. So if, as long as you can spell that out and if it's still an idea phase, maybe SCTR is the best way to go. So is it still possible to apply for phase one or is you definitely Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, let, so let me be so, clear for, for everybody on the line. It, it takes uh, a few hours to, to build one of these phase one proposals now with an open topic. So the impact that allocation of resources you're going to have to dedicate to this, it, we think is pretty minimal. Um, but uh, and, and apply and if you're not a, selected or awarded, then how much skin have you lost in the game? Okay, so it, it doesn't have to be so D doesn't have to be in the market today. But D is something that could conceivably be in the market, and and so you is that sort of the the, the qualifying for the criteria for, for phase one? Uh, you got it. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna the question is is how valid is product D gonna gonna be? How how easily adaptable is it gonna be? And it, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to articulate that within your proposal. Uh, but that's that's the question you're gonna have to answer. Okay, for both commercial and military uh, use. Right. Next question. Thank you. Hello, Jared. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, one of the things that I was I was wondering about is we have a, a patented product that has both uh, commercial viability and the duality being from the Department of Defense, as we see it. And. And I got on the call a little bit late, but is there a specific program? Because the program that I'm looking at uh, is specifically designated for the Air Force. It's AF201-CS01. But if I submit this application, this proposal, um, are they going to, are the reviewers going to look at this on the merits of the individual proposal and then possibly allocate that through all the DOD? 
So that's a great question. So when we oh, when we go through and evaluate it uh, for commercialization and, and so on, uh, we are certainly looking at uh, an Air Force Air Force applications, right? Yeah. Um, being said, I mean we can in a phase two we can leverage uh, DoD funds, some across across um, uh, services and and so on. So uh, just because it has applicability other places doesn't mean that uh, you can't come you know through the Air Force way of if you will. Um, ultimately, what we're looking at doing is, um, you know, we try to prioritize Air Force and, and now Space Force priorities. Um, but, you know, I, I dare say that if you find something that works for another service, for another uh, part of government, chances are there's an application in the Air Force as well. Okay, and, and one other question. We've got the, uh, the submission that I'm thinking about uh, utilizing is for a, a cleaner, greener fuel. And I just want to make certain that I've got a, I've got a fuel that's been approved by the EPA. I've got it patented in seven countries. Uh, it's just something that the Air Force or the DOD may be as much fuel as they use uh, may be amenable to in the future. Sure. Yeah, it's a great question. We'd love to see your proposal and and be able to take a chance to evaluate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Next. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think you answered the question, but I just want clarity. We are commercially um, a product that's been in, in commercialization for the last three years, um, and but we are a, a, a training tool or a, a web ba a cloud based application for micro learning as a service. And so looking at the open topics, I didn't see anything squarely. I think what I heard you say is even if it's not in there, if we see it and can articulate how it could work with emergency preparedness, first responders, you know, military um, support, that we should articulate that in our application. And it would be a phase one SBIR, correct? Absolutely correct. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Next. Yes, uh, one more question on the, um, uh, uh, can you give us some examples of uh, so A, B, C equals D solutions that have been successfully uh, brought through the process and uh, our case studies or uh, something like that? Yeah, I would say uh, a, a good example would be, um, you know, you're, you're proposing uh, this this widget, right? So uh, if I can give you a, a better example, um, we'll call it uh, software. So this software service is going to do this, right? By taking aspects from these three other softwares that are out there. That's an aggregate solution that is yet to be tested. And so that's, that's what we're talking about, A, B, and C equaling D without that product actually being validated. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. And so that's appropriate for phase one, is what you're saying. Yeah. Next question. Hi, I've got a question more for clarity than anything else. Uh, I see a lot of questions in the uh, in the chat, and I've got the same question myself. And I think there's a few of us in the same boat. Uh, so a company that has an ongoing active Air Force specific phase two uh, contract. Uh, for, in our case, we're under 19.2 in an open topic. So can we still apply to the joint state one I'm guessing, the Air Force, uh, and proceed on the same path, even though our phase two Air Force won't expire until uh, December of 2020? Chris, can you back me up on that one? Yeah, so uh, now I'm going to join. As long as it's not essentially equivalent work, uh, you are eligible to apply for the 20.1 20 joint open job. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate your efforts to answer those questions in the sidebar, too. Yeah, it, because you, you answered to me, uh, to me as well. So that's what I want to be absolutely clear on. So it's the same, same product, if you will, widget software. Uh, 
applied to a different purpose, different use case. So the, so the question is, is so what we're looking for is the adaptation of your yep. non-defense commercial solution to meet a specific defense need. If you are proposing to make a different adaptation to meet a different defense need, that can be a different uh, set of research. However, make sure it actually is different than the original one, um, because if you propose things that are not actually different, then you are defrauding the U.S. government, and that is illegal. Yeah, got it. No problem. Just, just to clear things up, though. Just to add on to that, so say if we have a phase one, and the entire point of phase one is with the Air Force is to do customer discovery and find an end user. So I, it, it is, let me, let me correct that. So the point of the phase one is to develop a solution to meet a specific defense need. So the big thing that we're doing here is you're developing the technical modifications as well as the, uh, as well as who the person actually will use that will be. So the big difference between what we've been doing with the open topic and past topics is that in the past there have been topics uh, that folks have focused just on the technical improvements without any regard to who the end user would be. Now with the open topic, it's important that you understand any sort of technical adaptations or improvements that you're making with regard to who the person actually using the solution actually should be. So there is both technical and customer discovery work being done at the same time during a phase one and also the phase two. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. So can you give an example of how the customer discovery and the technical adaptation works during a phase? one award for the joint open topic for a company with a commercially viable product that's in the market today but not used within DOD? Yeah, so some examples we've had are, are uh, something that, that people have been selling to say like the oil and gas industry um, but requires maybe something to be hardened a little bit more intensely for certain things that we're doing or requires a higher level of cybersecurity around that or maybe it requires a little bit longer range, and so they have to do more development into the motor efficiency or the energy storage technologies. What, what the phase one would look like would be going out and talking to folks, showing them what they currently have in non-defense commercial space, figuring out how the requirements are different for the folks that they're talking with, and then figuring out if it's actually feasible to make the adaptations of their non-defense commercial solution to meet that defense need. Right, and so planning out that research for okay, well, if I need to get an extra twenty percent of range out of this, and it's going to be a little bit higher end, then then that's the kind of work that we need to be doing. With the intent, then, is that you then take that say twenty percent longer range for, for say a drone and bring it back to your non-defense commercial solution that you can then hopefully you know grow yourself into more valuable business um, and grow in the U.S. economy. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, we also have some language that was in the NDAA supporting our commercially viable, our commercial solution today. Is this a good way to kind of take to leverage that and reference that during the submission? So all we care about is that you're finding somebody, a human being that cares about using your solution. Okay. So we just, what we don't want is people doing science experiments to sit on a shelf. We want to make sure that you're you're pushing you're pushing your technical progress in a way that is informed by the needs of a specific human. Got it. Thanks. And we will help you connect as best we can to potential customers. Hi, this is Jerry. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so. Let's say we are applying to the Air Force SBIR as a phase one. How, sp how specific do we have to target or do we have to identify the target customer? So do we have to say, all right, it's generally it's Cybercom or it's this person in Cybercom and you actually name them? We want, we want your best guess. Uh, it, we think this product market fit would, would reside here. As specific as you can be, better, uh, but we just want your best guess uh, because we don't want you in a, we don't want the proposals to come across looking like you're just trying to sell us something. We want you to come across as you are poised to solve a potential problem in this space. So that's the approach we, we want you to take, if that helps. 
Okay, thank you. So at the end of the, I'm trying to now understand what the gap is from the, if you are uh, awarded a phase one um, and what the gap looks like from phase one to phase two. So at the end of the 90 day period on phase one, um, are, are, are you asked ahead of time to submit a phase two proposal? And if so, how does that work? How long does it Yep, everybody that gets in a phase one will have the opportunity to submit a phase two. And I didn't talk about timelines, but we're, we're, we're on the benchmark of awarding contracts 30 days or within 30 days-ish of, of companies uh, uh, getting their, their proposals, solicitations uh, closed. So that's the speed we're trying to go. And you expect roughly four months after your, your phase one starts that, that uh, you'll receive feedback on, on your phase two. So roughly we'll plan on awarding the phase one if all goes well on the first week of March. So you'll be on contract with less than 30 days. For this, for 20.1 phase one companies, there will be a collider, an effort for you to meet and, and discuss uh, your, your approach with, with members in the Department of Defense. And that will be held in Austin the week prior to South by Southwest. So the, the week after that you may get a contract is when we're looking to have a collider event. But that's not all encompassing. That's not, that's not the only avenue we're gonna take to help you connect. We've also set up some, some framework on the back end that's more passive that you just uh, fill in a, a response in a survey and we'll help you connect to appropriate stakeholders that way. Um, Hi there. Uh, hello. Yeah, we got you. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so can you apply for both phase one and phase two simultaneously? Um, and also with phase two, uh, if you have an Air Force customer um, that you can solve a problem for uh, and has agreed to partner with you, did I see that you have to have, they have to match funding? So if they, you know, up to 1.5 million. So if, if they have, you know, 500,000, then, then, then your office would match 500,000 out of it to be a, a total of a million. Is that what has to happen? Uh, so uh, just curious to see your, to your thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, good question. And that's the direct to phase two route. That's you skipping a phase one in essence. And that's, that you're correct. That's, that's a requirement for going direct to phase two. Now, let's say you, you go from phase one to phase two, you are not required to have those matching funds. There's still that, that uh, typical aspect or that typical phase two proposal that, that can award up to a 500K for, for a base effort. So um, a question on the, uh, the phase one budget uh, is that, do, do you need a detailed budget in the document or uh, is, is, it, is there a uh, specific deliverable you want us to, uh, uh, to cost out? That, yep, good, good question. So your, your primary work is going to be that customer discovery slash feasibility study. Like Chris mentioned earlier, like how is this going to work? Uh, who all needs to be involved? So there's, there's your scope of, of how your phase one is going to work. And yes, uh, you will need to provide a statement of work, but it's very simple. And you can find that in our template. Please, for everybody on the, on the line, there is no need for any proprietary work statements going into a phase one. And also, we're not looking to, to develop anything or prototype anything. So the IP data rights assertions are really not needed either for, for phase one. You're just having candid discussions and lining out roadmaps with members of the Department of Defense. But uh, good question. Thanks for picking that up. Uh, this is Matt Young. I've got two Hi, this is good. Um, the two questions I have are contingent. One is on the other. The first question has to do <clears throat> with commercial viability. Um, 30 years ago, we developed a product for DOD. We pitched it to them. Uh, a bunch of folks looked at it. They showed some interest. They bought some units. They were tested overseas, et cetera. And um, we always imagined that one day we could make commercial sales off of it, but we never really pursued that because DOD was our primary customer. And um, we moved on to other products. Recently, the Coast Guard has approached us, asked for that product specifically, and we're now in negotiation with them to set up a contract and sell them that product that we used to offer to the military. So my question is, we always imagined that it would be commercially viable, but we never actually marketed it to commercial users. 
Um, give me an example of what early in one of your slides it mentioned don't even bother applying if you don't have commercial traction. So would I have any opportunity here or do I need to go good, out and sell you? Good, good, good question. When we're talking commercial traction, uh, uh, hopefully I articulated that well enough, is we're looking for non-research money for that, that product, non-silver dollars, if you will, for that product. It sounds like you, can you have commercialization with, with defense contracts? Absolutely. But uh, yeah, I, I think I got taken out of context. What I was referring to was research funding uh for your product which doesn't sound like you're in that boat so yeah please apply. okay so so if we if we don't have any commercial sales under our belt that's no biggie is, is that correct correct so when we're talking commercialization it's a, exactly that non-research dollars okay and then the the second question that was contingent are you able to address anything about the focus areas in this call Uh, it, so how, how the focus areas will work is if you are in line with one of those, articulate that in your proposal. We'll have a team associated with each of those focus areas taking a look at your proposal. And there is an opportunity to have an associated pitch day with those proposals, but that will all come in time and uh, we, we won't keep you in the dark. Uh, step one right now is just to get a proposal in and, and annotate that if you are in line with any of those focus areas but you are not required okay. to be in line with any of those focus areas. All right, that's all I had, thank you. Yep. Hi, uh, My, Michael Grimes here, I had a question. Go if ahead, we have a direct to phase two that's not uh, against a specific topic, where do we actually submit that direct phase two for? Uh, what's the process for that? Yeah, it's uh, same. Uh, you go to our website. Uh, you'll have the the phase direct phase two instructions posted, and uh, you submit uh, the same mechanism as we're doing with with these phase ones. We're doing this CSO, or is, which is essentially a commercial purchase order from from the government to to businesses. So we call it CSO, stands for Commercial Solutions Offering. But that's our approach, and that's why we're doing a little bit different, like. Uh, what Jared mentioned earlier, away from the BAA construct and going through the CSO route. So, uh, how, how, like, what to click on? The best way to find that is go to our website, and and you'll see how to apply and where to apply. Okay. So, and then, what are the the ceilings on phase two with matching dollars? Versus so, the maximum you can get from Silver Office is one point five mil. And that can be an okay. aggregate solution of commercial uh, or private and government funds. Okay. But do we have to have a government client name just like uh, someone yep. mentioned in the previous? Yeah, we still have to have government buy-in with the MOU uh, that, that's on the website. That still needs to be there. That's a requirement. And then in addition to that, you need to have funding uh, that, that's being matched. Yep. Okay. So, so can I... Uh, one question, if, if the government is not able to match the exact funding, is that an issue? So you can have private funding uh, being matched as well. I see. So you can have funding from another source, maybe a systems integrator or something, someone else. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then final question, um, with regards to uploading on the, uh, to do the applications, uh, do you put the 15 page um, application or slide deck as well as the five page tech volume uh, upload into the same portal? You'll see that, whenever you go to apply that you, you'll be able to uh, add certain aspects within within your proposal. So it's actually when you, when you go online to, to apply there, you'll fill out a DOD cover sheet, right? Which is just admin data. Then they'll have some questions for your commercialization report. Then I'll ask you for a uh, click here to submit your, your supporting documents, tech volume, et cetera. So if you look at the instructions that I outlined, uh, I believe, I don't want to misquote, when in doubt, go to the instructions. But uh, for the slide deck, it'll be other documents and the, there will be an actual spot for your tech volume uh, in the submission. Okay, I just wasn't sure if, if it was done uh, via a Word document or if it was just done electronically on that portal to submit. So yeah, you'll, you'll do a PDF and you'll upload it to the portal. Okay. 
Earlier, uh, you'd mentioned uh, military installations are small cities. Uh, could you uh, give us a sense for how the cities are, these, these military installations are administered? Like, uh, there's, you know, part, like who is in charge of the different types of infrastructure and, uh, or how, how does it all, uh, how is it, uh, uh, who are the stakeholders for the military installations? Yeah, so, uh, and, and, and that's a great question. That's exactly the type of proposal we're looking for. So you think that this would apply to, to this aspect within the military installation. Your best guess would be, would be X. So how, how it works is, uh, you know, it differs, it differs from service to service. Uh, for the Air Force, we have, you know, a civil engineering squadron that maintains the, uh, the infrastructure, right? Uh, so that's who it is in the Air Force. I can't speak to, to how it is in, in the other branches, but in your proposal, you can articulate that I think this would apply for, for organizations that maintain buildings. That's sufficient enough, if that makes sense. Okay. And how about uh, if it regard to the health of the, uh, um, of the servicemen? Uh, so that's, that's the environmental or, or the you know, civil engineering. Uh, is there a corresponding uh, uh, person in charge of the, of the health? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I can't give you like names for, for each base and uh, you really don't need it to get your foot in the door either. So um, okay. uh, going back to my previous response, uh, frame it like that for your phase one proposal. And, and, and that's what we're looking for is, is where do you think this can help the military? Okay. Uh, qu a question about matching funds. Go ahead. Hello. Yep. Uh, Okay, so um, the matching funds on the uh, phase two is uh, either two to one or one to one based upon whether the companies received a prior phase two. Is that, am I correct on this? Correct. And does that prior phase two, a DOD phase two or any phase two in the US government? Chris, do you want to back me up on that one? Sorry, can we repeat the question one more time? Yeah, it's uh, two to one matching if you received a previous phase two contract. And from my understanding, that's any phase two, correct? So there, we, that no longer, we no longer have it different between if you received a phase two before or not. It's two to one from uh, non cyber STTR federal sources and one to one of private funds. Private funds can be things like pre sales or IP sharing agreements, um, or some companies choose to uh, uh, sell equity, other things like that. Thank you, Chris. Uh, if you don't, uh, th thank you, Chris. If you don't mind me just making clear, we have received a prior phase two with NIST. Uh, that does not, that, that still means that we could get two to one matching funds, correct? Yes, you can, but we will not match other SBIR funds. I understand. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask a follow on to that? Um, so if you have uh, investment from a military customer that's your matching funds is does the effort cyber office only go up to 500,000 and the total project amount is 1.5 million the total amount the total amount of SBIR funds the uh, maximum is 1.5 million so, so if you so had about the 750k of government plus 1.5 million of cyber for a total of 2.25 Okay, great. Thank you. Can you talk about how the selection process is is going to work now with it being joint? I know the Air Force has the focus areas. So I can see where they go in those bins for the focus areas, but the joint ones, I don't think there's many focus areas or user needs. When these things come in, how are they going? To so, so uh, good, good question. So. Prior to focus areas or needs IDs being accounted for, we're still looking at the proposals to determine if <laughs> if a company's proposal is selectable, if, if if that makes sense. And so we would get buy-in from the from the focus areas or or needs ID section saying, you know, we really like companies X, Y, and Z. Uh, there are top three, etc. I will tell you right now, uh, we have we have not turned any companies down due to the focus areas or, or, or whatnot saying that they did not want a certain company. At all the ones that have been deemed selectable have made it through to, to, to get a phase one contract. So uh, I hope that that provides some, some context to you. What we're looking for here is, is if you got a commercially viable product that you think may be able to be adapted and, and solve problems within the Department of Defense, 
uh, odds are that that's how we're going to look at it uh, for the proposal prior to looking at a focus area buy-in. And, and phase one does not require matching dollars, correct? Correct. I'm about to. Yes, go ahead. I was just, for phase two, it's a dollar for dollar match because the example you just gave, you said 750 uh, matches 1.5 for a total of 2.25. Is it a dollar for dollar match for direct to phase two? Yeah, what Chris was mentioning, two to one for government funds, one to one for private funds. <clears throat> okay. So, um, well, one thing you mentioned uh, was you'd like to see. Uh, who this uh, uh, product would apply for in, in the phase one. And so uh, what are the different things you'd like to see covered? Uh, you know, kind of all the, what are all the bases you'd like to see covered? You know, what makes a successful uh, proposal? Like what are, what are the sort of the three or four things that are most important? Yeah, the three pillars we're looking for is technical viability, commercialization, and, and defense and, and defense need, right? The, the impact you can have for the Department of Defense. So technical, we're looking at what traction do you have with your commercial product? You know, is, is there sales revenue? What non-research money is being allocated towards it? Commercialization, where is the company going to be at in, in three to five years? What's that plan look like? And then how can how easily do you think it can be uh, adapted for government use and who could it impact? So going at it through those three lenses uh, is what we're looking for. Thank you, Ray. Hi, uh, hey, so I had a, a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, yeah, so, so I had a question on, on phase two. Uh, for kind of private funds coming in, let's say you get some investment, what is sort of the time window uh, for when that <clears throat> private investment money comes in? Does it have to be you know, within a certain time window around the phase two, or is it kind of a broader you know, you got yeah, private. so, uh, and, and when in doubt, go to the instructions, but I believe it's from the time of pre-release until 90 days post phase two contract award. Would you have, uh, need to have those funds into your company? Okay, thank you. Yep. We're waiting on uh, a response from the T3 accelerator. Uh, should we be accepted for that accelerator program? Do you guys forecast any issues with having a uh, parallel uh, phase one application uh, or could that lead to possibly us having to vacate the phase one cyber uh, in case there's overlap? Uh, um, I just want to know some thoughts if there are, there are pinch points there or if uh, they can both coexist, coexist happily. No, other efforts that you're having with your company should not uh, impact the, uh, the phase one. Thank you. Next, yeah, so I had next a, uh, yeah, so I had a, a kind of another question on the cost volume specifically. Uh, there's something that's there called, you know, like labor uh, overhead. And I uh, was having challenge in the instructions finding exactly how to calculate that for your company. And I was also Googling that and wasn't having much luck either. Uh, is there kind of a, uh, a good place to go to learn how to specifically, you know, figure that percentage out? Yeah, from, from my vantage point, from my lens, no, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I can't best answer that, what, how it'll work for, for your company on how you allocate you know, those funding resources. Someone else may be able to answer help uh, better on that one. Al Schultz, on the D2P2, am I, am I heard? Yes. Thanks. On the D2P2, um, I want to go to the Army. Uh, does that uh, proposal follow the standard uh, protocol or is there some uh, uh, accelerated slide program that you guys do on the phase twos? This is Chris Benson. So if you want to go to the Army, the answer is apply to the joint uh, open topic phase one and then we'll work with the 
and, and then the Army folks will work with you on, on their requirements to go to a phase two with the Army. But the directive phase two that we're discussing on this uh, AMA is specifically for the Air Force. Okay, so I, uh, I want to go to the uh, joint um, directive phase two. I have an Army there, customer. There is, no, there is no joint directive phase two. You want to go to the joint phase one. That will get you in the door for the phase two option uh, three months after your phase one is awarded. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm confused then that this, uh, I wanna make clear, this AF201 DC SO1 is only for the Air Force. It is not a joint um, phase two. That is correct. Thank you very much. And thank you for the time to answer all these questions. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Uh, oh, okay. I can't tell if you can hear me. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, I just want to be very clear about this. For the, the uh, joint CSO1, is there a floor TRL level for a submission of a technology? No. No. So you aren't using TRLs at all? Because you keep talking about you want a commercial thing, but is that more kind of a goal than a, than a threshold? Here, here uh, uh, to, to answer it with, with, with a different approach, I can have some that's a TRL dime, but no one's buying it, right? Right. Um, so, so how great is, is a product? If it's TRL one or, or nine, it, it, it's a moot point to us. What we're looking at is what traction is there behind it? Is this dual, dual solution an actual potential dual use solution? So uh, that, that's the better way to answer that question, not necessarily a TRL level, but uh, who else is interested in your product? Well, it's, we have a lot of products we're working on. It's just the testing and qualification for them is fabulously much more expensive than the design and prototyping of them. We can bang out a, uh, a prototype for very small dollars, but no one wants to attach it to their very expensive system without it being qualified as per mill standard, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And so they're like, hey, this is fabulous. Just you got to move it up. You know, you got to take it through the lab before we want to you know, bolt it onto this very expensive vacuum system or this very, very expensive electronic <laughs> system. And so do you have, uh, so like, uh, I'm sure you're, you're not the only company in this boat. We see a lot of proposals in line with this. What, uh, how, what is that product poised to do after it's developed? What commercial traction is there post <clears throat> SRL 6? You, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, well, we have potential interested end users. Or, you know, they're like, hey, look, we want to start playing with this system to get to understand what it brings us but we can't dare attach it to our very expensive, you know, safety critical, you know, uh, you know, system without, you know, lots of approvals, you know, and I mean, look, you don't, nobody wants to be standing around explaining why someone got their face blown off by this experimental hardware. Uh, but, you know, it's, as you know, it's, you know, it's one of those ones of, you know, I'm used to talking to people in terms of TRLs, and if you're not using that as sort of a framework, more of a customer traction framework, because I've got, you know, I, I can bring in letters of support from the customer saying very specifically, we would like to try this out at our facility, you know, which is, I think, what you're aiming to do, but well, it's very- Well, not, not looking, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm, l let me re rephrase, uh, what commercial traction is always not necessarily we're interested in in partnering or or seeing what your widget does but here, here's x amount of dollars for if it's successful is very different than we're just interested in in you know quote unquote playing with with, with what you got and if, Leif, I'll, I'll jump in here Leif. yeah in, in general we're, we're looking really to go more towards the user-centered uh, development approach rather than the trl approach so as long as there's kind of a user that says we want this that's much so, more important. As long as they're a user that is using it, even if it's a trial or a demo. 
is using it or wants to use it? Is using it. Even in an, an alpha state. And it can, but, but this is, this is where, so, so we can, this is where uh, TRLs start to get a little messy here when you're dealing with adaptations of non-defense commercial solutions, right? So the adaptation might not have even really existed even in theory before this, right? And so that might be technically a very low TRL level. However, the, the non-defense commercial solution which you are adapting to meet the defense need might be a relatively high TRL level. Um, and so I would encourage you to think more about the overall technical risk rather than on pigeonholing it into the TRL framework. You know, I'm sorry, now I'm just confused. Uh, I'm, but I'll try and go back through the slides and rethink this. The, the next question is, is if we apply that same question to your, uh, uh, the STTR, then, you know. As early stage as you want for STTR. As early stage as you want for the STTR. Yep, in okay. general, STTR is going to be an earlier stage than the phase ones, and the phase ones definitely end up being earlier stage than the SBIR phase twos. So if you're if, if in doubt and you're really, really early stage, then STTR is generally the best place to go. Okay. Uh, the, uh, now, do we have to have the same paperwork? I, I've done a couple of normal STTRs, and you have to have a full proposal from your partner and that sort of thing, your research partner. And it's really, really hard to get a university to get excited about, you know, writing a proposal for, you know, single digit thousands of dollars of work. You still don't have to partner with, with either a nonprofit or your university, but the proposal requirements are far less uh, uh, you know, restrictive as, as the other ones are. So, so an, but, a thin... A thin proposal from our university partner is more than adequate. So, so the proposal should be written by by the company you um, with, so, and then you would subcontract to the university. Yes, but do I have to have a agreed? Yes, the, the, you must subcontract to a university or nonprofit. Nonprofit. Garrett, one of the things that we look for is uh, in the proposal is just a formal team arrangement with the, with the research entity, right? You don't necessarily have to go into the nitinoid details. We're not going to step into your relationship with, with the research entity, university, or otherwise. We just have to know that you guys are working with them specifically on this project. Well, will an email from them saying, yeah, we're willing to do X and Y for about this much suffice, or do I need to have a signed proposal from the vice president of research? Uh, what we tend to see is a, a, a memo, you know, on university letterhead that says, yes, we are in support of this program uh, as proposed by the small business. So it's just a support letter. Essentially, I mean, you know, like, like I said, it needs to be specific for this effort in particular. So it's, it's a little bit more specific than just a generic support letter. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, they just need to, they don't have to publish the, the formal agreement with you all. Again, we just need to know that you are going to satisfy the research uh, entity requirement uh, for the program. Now, for everybody, can, I, can, I, can I get that? If I send my detailed question to the support email, maybe we can resolve that there. All right. The, let's move on to our third question money. In the uh, STTR uh, phase one or the joint SBIR phase one, it's got a small phase one amount of money and you apply for the phase two. All, assuming you meet, check all your boxes and get the memo you know, and the milestone and the buy-in by the customer, does all of the money for the phase two 500K come from AFWorks or does the... Uh, agency need, you know, the government agency need to throw in their own money? There's two routes you can go. You can go uh, with traditional, which is 500K up to 500K of just SIBR dollars from, from AFWorks AFRL, or you can uh, partner with uh, investors on the government side. 
or the private side when we will match. And there's specific caveats that will be outlined in the instructions for that phase two round. And we'll answer all those questions. But uh, the 500K you guys actually have and can award and the, universe, and the government partner or the government sponsor does not have to use their institutional dollars. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's, that's a very, you know, that's, uh, it, institutional dollars are thin and hard to come by. Uh, the kind of my final question is to direct the phase to the DCS 01. We have to have all of the stuff that we would have coming out of your phase one process, the memo and all that signed by the customer. Do they also have to then put in institutional dollars to match DCS so, 01? Right. Were you on the call for the for its entirety? Yes, but the webinar audio is very poor quality. Okay. Yep. So those are specific caveats and the, the it's outlined in the instructions for the direct to phase two route. You do some um, quote unquote institutional dollars or private investment that comes uh, in, a, in addition to. SBIR dollars. So, yep, those are specific caveats. Unique for direct phase two, but not required if you're going from phase one to phase two. For everybody on the call, we want to say thank you very much for taking time out of your day. We'll post this uh, this video uh, on our website, and we'll include aspects from from uh, chat on there as well. This does not this does not close out uh, Q and A. If your company does have questions that that uh, they need answered. Uh, you feel free to, to hit us up at support at afworks.af.mil, and I, uh, I'll maintain this line open for a few stragglers. But we want to end the official call. We're well over time, and uh, we want uh, those that need to get back to work to get back to work. So I'm going to stop the recording and uh, thank you again for everybody dialing in and the stakeholders for being on to help us answer questions. And if uh, you do have some outliers, I'll hang tight for a few more minutes. But thank you, everybody. Thanks. Just thank one real hey, quick can I ask question. One? Oh, I had one too. <laughs> uh, so, so when we're talking about uh, building the pricing, uh, if it's an FFP for a single deliverable, we just build out an FFP price. We don't have to do loaded rates, et cetera, correct? 